Father, we thank you this morning, and I desperately seek grace um, for accurate utterance to bring forth your mind in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us. Let your hand be stretched and please take the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained the good report. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God and that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, if you study the approach of Jesus in building capacity and in unveiling kingdom things, you will find out that Jesus will almost always, almost always avoid a definition. And part of the reason why Jesus would almost always avoid a definition is because he doesn't want a, a carnal effort to be sufficient to enter into the economy of the mysteries of God. However, in Apostle Paul's delivery, you will see a very rich deposit of the spirit of wisdom and revelation and most of the definitions that we hold came through his ministry when the spirit of wisdom and revelation goes to work what it produces is that it brings the counsel of God in simple plain language spiritual concepts are broken down and grinded to the minutest level so that everyone can perceive what the Spirit of God is saying in the Spirit. Now, Paul brings a definition. And if we are going to journey on the path of faith, we will need to look deeply at the definition that Apostle Paul brings on the subject of faith. The word he uses in the original linguistic context is hypostasis. Hypostasis means to substantiate. And so there is an adventure that hope is embarking upon. And that adventure reaches its terminus when there is hypostasis, when that initiative of hope is substantiated and hope takes a hold of substance. Now, I need to describe and to explain further. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Because there are two key words in that verse one and my emphasis for this morning is verse one. The first key word is substance. I will need to investigate it from the linguistic perspective. Second key word there is evidence. And faith is substance. Faith is the evidence. So we need to know what this substance is. We also need to know the meaning, the root word that was used for evidence so that we can understand the kind of evidence that the substance of faith is. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So, hypostasis talks about substantiating. If you 
are a teacher. And there are several things you want to teach in chemistry, you need to substantiate it by structure. There are several things that you want to teach in biology, you need to substantiate it with a diagram. Your effort to substantiate administers reality to things that would have been abstract and immaterial. So when dealing with God, our dealings with God is not an abstract initiative. It is an enterprise that has to do with substance. And the substance I speak of is not physical substance, is spiritual substance. This spiritual substance is furnished by the efforts of the Holy Spirit to, to administer the reality of that which, that for which you hoped for. The Holy Spirit now comes and he administers substance as a proof that that which you hope for is existing in the realm of reality. In order for the Holy Spirit to succeed in this enterprise, he becomes that which you were hoping for, and he allows your spirit to be able to identify that that which you hoped for has found its veritable substance. That's the first point. Second point is evidence. The word that is used for evidence is the same word that is used for a witness in court. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 5 that there, 5 verse 7, 6 to 7, 1 John 5, 6 to 7. Uh, okay. Now, this scripture I want to read to us is a means, is a prophetic means by which the real Jesus was to be identified. And so the Bible says that Jesus came by water and by blood and even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and by blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Uh, okay, verse 7. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Go to eight. And uh, there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Don't forget the context. Don't forget the context. The context is an attempt to verify who the real Jesus is. He now said... There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father bears witness. The Word bears witness. The Spirit bears witness. Are you there? And concerning Jesus, there are three that bear witness on earth that is authentic. Number one, the Spirit. Number two, you will notice that the identity of Jesus was revealed when he went for John the Baptist's baptismal service, in fact, the purpose of John's baptism, even though many people came for his baptism and were blessed, but the purpose of his baptism was a strategy by which the Messiah was going to be identified. And the moment Jesus came out of the water, guess what happened? The alignment of heaven was disrupted. And the Holy Ghost descended from heaven. This Holy Ghost happens to be one of the witnesses that witnesses from where? Now, you will notice that the Father also bore witness from heaven. Uh, but all of these reactions are taking place because Jesus came up out of the water. So one of the facilities by which Jesus was to be revealed was the water. And that was what John was saying. Are you there? So when he came out of the water, some strange omens began to take place. 
and the omens that took place was consistent with the marching orders that John received in the wilderness that occasioned his coming to Jordan to baptize. And John bore record because the things that happened when Jesus came out of the water are consistent with the prescription he was given to identify who the Messiah was. The Bible also says that another witness on earth was blood. You will notice when Jesus' blood hit the ground outside of the walls of Jerusalem, a lot of omens found expression. One of the omens was an eclipse. Another omen was earthquake. And these omens were not spiritual. These omens were in the realm of the natural. It was occasioned by the blood of Jesus that touched down outside of the walls of Jerusalem in keeping with the requirement of the scapegoat in the Old Testament. The moment these things happened, even the centurion that was an unbeliever, when he saw the omens that resulted from the interactions with his blood on the earth, the man concluded that Jesus was a righteous man because that guy was not a stranger to crucifixion. Jesus was not the first person he was supervising on the cross. And obviously, Jesus was not the last. But he came to that conclusion because of the reactions that took place because of the impact of Jesus' blood. And I don't have time to take you to Genesis and show you the impact of the blood of an innocent man on the ground. That is, Abel was innocent. But Jesus' blood was the blood of a righteous man. I don't have time to do the comparison. But you see, what I wanted to draw your attention to is that the Holy Ghost happens to be a witness of things in heaven and a witness of things on earth. So the office of witness is given to the Holy Ghost. And in order for you to verify several things that are obtainable in... Are you with me? Mm. Your wife can be sitting close to you in this conference now and your eyes are blinded to it until the Holy Ghost bears witness. So even on, in things on earth... May, may the Lord give us understanding. Even about things, even about things that are on earth, you will still need this grand witness to open perspectives so that you, you can understand it. So he is the grand captain of witness. In the issue of substance that I'm talking about, this substance that we are trying to define is a product of the Spirit's witness. When the Spirit administers witness, that witness is so solid, so tangible, that the Bible calls it hypostasis. It has substantiated uh, the desire that was sustained in your hoping. And now your hoping has arrived as a terminus, and on the strength of that, a spiritual reality and transaction has been adequately contracted. He said that substance is what faith is. And faith is not a product, it bypasses your mind. Faith bypasses your mind. And that's why the avenue through which this substance can be aborted is the pathway of your mind. The longest distance is not from east to west. It's the distance between your heart to your mind. God uses your heart as a star mark if he wants to land upon your life and the devil is going to fight the agenda of God through doubt that comes from your mind. So whether or not you sustain the capacity to exercise faith sufficient to move mountains is determined by how you manage your heart and your mind. Hallelujah. You see, the world is hostile for people that decide to be righteous. You can lose promotions in your office because you decide to subscribe to the principles of righteousness. And you, you may think it is a setback. You may think it is, it, is, um, it, is, it is obstructing your possibility and your prosperity. 
That's why the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. God knows that the society is hostile to people that are just. So he created faith as the way the just should live in order to survive in an offensive, in a hostile world. That's the prescription of life <laughs> for the just. And that's why you need to know how it is. It is not a thing. Faith is supposed to be your life as a just man. You, you have accepted to be just. You have accepted to function in righteousness. That operating system is not compatible with what is obtainable in the world. So he now created a pathway that is unique to us. And that pathway is what? Faith. Come with me. This substance thing, we need, to, we need to press on it a little more. Come with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Verse 15. He says, thou hast increased the nation, O Lord. Thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified. And thou hadest removed it far unto the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble they have visited thee. And they have poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Like a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery is in pain and cried out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have been as it were brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. That's a man that is operating with presumption. He has no substance, but he was expecting. He was expecting that after the gestation period, there will be a manifestation that came about Apostle Paul's ministry. The thing about spiritual authority is that when a man is brought into the room to steward authority, the authority manifests through a certain tributary. And it is not a tributary of your choosing, but it's a tributary of the Lord's choosing. Now, Apostle Paul, if you look at him in the natural, he was feeble. If you sit under his ministration like this, he did not have very powerful utterance in his spoken ministry. They, you know, he said it himself, that my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. He was not an orator. But when Apostle Paul sits down to write the inspired words of God, he travels with weight. He could make people weep his writings. You could see that there was an authority that traveled with his letters. And so he was trying to tell the church that I'm not trying to, it's not an attempt to terrify you. Uh, the grace I carry is designed to equip and protect you. Are you there? But I wanted you to see that people's feedback about him was that in the natural, hey, give me that verse. Verse 10. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is what? Is weak. And his speech is, you can even, is contemptible. So the power behind Paul was not in the natural. The power behind Paul was a substance that he was not in the natural. The power behind Paul was a substance that he carried in the spirit. 
and the channel through which we collide with the efficacy of that power was in his, his right. What makes a man powerful? What gives him the scepter of dominion? Is that which has harshed on the spirit man. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Don't go around with a big body when you are a small man in actuality. I will tarry before God until I become big inside. The Bible says that the spirit of a man shall... Yeah. Come with me. Let's do a quiet journey for the next 15 minutes. And let me show you evidences to prove that you have received substance. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where. The thing that happens when you have received substance is that the oppression that is on your heart becomes bigger than the oppression in your mind. I would like for you to see. Are you with me? Is that scripture still on the screen? Oh, you're not here. In order for us to say you have substance, the substance must be bigger than the obvious questions that your analytical mind would have asked if you were operating from that platform. Now, if you check this account now, this man was asked to go to a place that he would receive later as an inheritance. He obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. The question that his substance overcame here was where? If you are still asking the question where, it's an indication of the fact that you have not yet touched substance. It means you still need time in the closet. You came out too early. And if we leave you the way you are, you will bring forth wind. You will not be able to rot the reverence in the earth and the giants will still be standing. Someone resigned from a ministry and I asked him, okay, now that you have resigned, where has the Lord deployed you? Then you now realize he doesn't know where. <laughs> I advised him to go back first. Go back say you are, you are wrong and remain there until the body of the letter that you claim you have received comes. It's just the introduction you received and you, have, you are taking off like a tornado. <laughs> what will happen to you is that you will crash land. You are not pregnant yet. You are not pregnant. Yet. Come with me. Verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. The heirs with him of the same promise. Can you see the question that the substance, the substance was bigger than a certain question here. Ah, you see, he was dwelling in tents. With what? with Isaac and with Jacob. And I hope you know that a tent is a temporal infrastructure. So the question is, no, give me that scripture, give me that scripture, give me that scripture. By faith is sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. So he was waiting for that promise and dwelling in a temporal structure. His son dwelt there. His grandson dwelt there. They were waiting. So the question here is, when? When will he build a permanent structure? At what point will this promise come to pass? 
Those questions were not relevant because he had substance. If you are here today and the question of when is haunting you, when will I marry? When will the breakthrough come? And you are still in that jungle of when it is a, an acid test that you are not pregnant. The day you become pregnant, the issue of when will no longer be a matter. He said, long time I bought there, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted that signs and wonders be done by their hand. Long time. The time was no longer a matter. They were traveling on the strength of a reality. That reality was so bogus that the argument of time did not come up. Please help me tell your neighbor that destiny is not time-based, it is encounter-based. So most people come and they begin to talk about the biological time clock that is ticking. When that person is empty of encounter, it will bring forth wind. There was a great minister in my city. This great minister was the first one that shook that city. But unfortunately, he did not live for so long. So I went to his son. I said, how many hours does your dad pray in a day? He told me. What of Bible study? He told me. Many other questions. Then I looked at it. And how long did he do all this thing before he broke through? He said, seven years. I said, I have time. I increase it. And I began to walk towards seven years. You know what? After seven years, you know what happened? It was not God that manifested. It was Satan. The ministry almost broke, almost ended. You know why? That time frame, I got it by analysis. <laughs> as long as you are still doing business with time frames, you lack substance. Destiny is not according to time, it is according to encounter. But you know what? Are you there? Yes, After the seven years failed, eh? if, I, if I was going to be fractured in ministry, that's the time. I ran into the sanctuary of the Lord. And when the encounters came, there was no time element on the encounter. I stood up from there and I continued the pilgrimage. I can tell you now from hindsight that the actual time frame was 14 years. There is no way you can know how long. No way. There's no technology anywhere that will give you a time. You know the Bible says that they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. It, 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 it took seven years here. And then you apply it to yourself. You don't know your calling is different. The context is different. The oil is different. The spiritual journeys are different. And your own case is different. So you will need to seek God out yourself. You, you will get your own time circles yourself. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's not by time. It is by encounter. It took 14 years. And after 14 years, every ambition I had to be on the stage had died. I was detained long enough not to serve myself, but to serve God. There are a lot of people running around, but they are in self-service. They took off. What they gave birth to is an embryo. They not match up. It's still self-service. It's still about the, the, the views and the likes. You want to be on the popular side? I died to that long time ago. Long time ago. That 14 year stretch is, have you, have you seen clay before? They, before they use it, they slap it. They beat it. They stretch it. Then it comes to a point where the clay is tired. I was tired at 14 years. 
So God now had the liberty to make what he wanted. You are still in your old native, your old native structure. Your ancient scent is still there. It's not by time. It's by encounter. Preach, to, preach for me. Preach for me. It's not by time. It's not by time. It's not by time. It's by encounter. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. The question here is how? The woman that was confirmed barren as a teenager, that has entered into menopause, her womb was a grave, it had dried up. There was no sound in it. And she received a rema from God. And the Bible says the reason why she was able to pass through the time of waiting for the manifestation of this rema was because she judged him faithful, who had promised. She had a revelation about the person of God. And she knew that God could not go back on his word. That was the only reason why her soul was rejuvenated. She stayed in faith because she knew who had spoken. Are you in that category that is asking, how shall these things be? It's a sign that you have no substance. You know, we are in the clinic. We are trying to diagnose where you are. No substance, if you're asking how. Because every time that question was asked, the answer was, the power of the Lord shall come upon thee, and the Spirit of God shall overshadow thee. An incubator womb that can trap the dimensions of God will be created by the Holy Ghost in your heart. That's how it happens. And it is not a physical process. It's a process that is in the Spirit of God, how he furnishes substance on the hearts of men. And if it is true that you have substance, you will not ask the question, how? Substance is the answer to how, is the answer to where, is the answer to when. She judged him faithful, who had promised. Verse 17, by faith. Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God went as far as telling Abraham, it is in this Isaac that your genealogy will be captured. Isaac is your future. Isaac is you in the next generation. It is through this line through his heartbeat, through his walk of faith, I'm going to extend what I have with you. God had spoken to him. And then the same God now came and said, offer up Isaac. Obey the last command. His head had gone haywire. The confusion was beyond repair. That was a journey that he did not travel with his head. He left his head at home, left reason at home, left the contentions he was going to have with his wife at home, and he traveled on from his heart. He never gave himself the opportunity to think about these details because there was something furnished upon his heart. The question he would have asked was, why? Is there anybody in this place that has asked God why before? You know why my hand is up? <laughs> Next question. Did he answer you? You know why he didn't answer you? Because he answered Job. Job asked why. And God in his majesty decided to 
respond to Job. In fact, when he came to respond to Job, his introduction was, who is this? He was looking for, who is this that darkened counsel by wars without knowledge? <laughs> it means when you listen to a man that lacks substance, even the little counsel you receive from God will suffer loss. Yes, yes. The little faith, the little light of faith, you are walking in that thread. You will lose it when you hear a man that darkens counsel. Have you heard a man that has spoken from the outer court, from experiences of life? You say, you know this life. You are likely to lose the last strand of your faith because that man is only empowered to darken counsel. Who is this? That darkened counsel by words without knowledge. That was the diagnosis of Job's condition. He was uttering words when no substance had come on his heart. Those words would be lies. Because one of the things that you will notice that is a symptom of valid substance is that substance controls the way you talk. It's so big. Substance is so big that it will, it will, it will influence your talking. I'm not saying you are trying to talk positive. I'm saying if you have substance, whether you like it, there's a way you will talk. It's just like a woman that is pregnant. There's a way she will behave. She can come in the night and say she wants bitter cola. <laughs> and then you begin to wonder. She did not reason that it was 2 a.m. She didn't reason that the people selling it have shut down. It's not about the mind. Eh? It's about the substance. What is, oh my God. 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 Make sure before you leave this mountain that you become impregnated of the Holy Ghost with substance. Too many people have brought forth wind, wind after wind. Now we need a wave of substance. Can we pray in this way? Huh. <laughs> I'm not going empty handed. I'm going to have an intercourse with the Holy Ghost. A viable seed that cannot die will be planted within me. The storms cannot kill it. The wind cannot disannul it. It is something stronger than the circumstances. It's something that has more authority than the situation. I lean on that seed that the Holy Ghost has planted within me. I will not look upon the wind. I will not get perspective from the cloud. Nothing in the natural will determine my possibilities, my destiny, my life. It will come out of the midst of that intercourse. <laughs> I go beyond weariness. I go beyond doubt. There is a reality stronger than anything that the devil can hash around me. For it is not of him that will it. Neither is it of him that run it. But it is of God that so at mercy, that so at mercy, that so at mercy. Is so many a coma, shaiko bresko filante, is o selo ombres ke ti alago badwa, braski to moko bobose, esko bebeli na kandemo, robenasi. Akla branda babos, eskila mantel, eskila man sokema, eskila man basket. There is an energy that drives us from within, a power that is responsible for our being possible.
positive. We have gone beyond the realm of positive thinking and talking. We speak from substance. We speak from reality. We speak from faith. Oh, Makailo Sigo. Let's so set a matalaya. The Eka Koben Masile. The Eka Sendomo Kala. I go Sima. Eskoba Bobo Sete. Eskoba Maike Latwa. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a sub nation. It is your time. Ah. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. And I beheld in the spirit. And I saw the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord has a transparent liquid in his hand. Upon inquiry, I realized it was I himself. And the Lord said, I will cause the blind to see. I will cause the deaf to hear my words. For the season is upon you, says the Spirit of God, that you will be able to try words through my discernment. My discerning power will be heightened upon your life so that you can try words in the Spirit. Oh! There is this lady I see now. And you are being lifted up by the angelic personality that came this morning. In the next seven seconds, the oil of God that will distinguish that lady will come upon her in seven seconds. 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 It is your time to be distinguished. Is this your time to be elevated? You have been on that spot for so long and the Lord comes to bring intervention to you. Oh my God. That lady is going, is going higher. This year is your year. I prophesy to you. Oh God. I so say like Obaminali. Esco falanali. Oh, oh, I hear a sound in the spirit. I hear a sound. It's a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Let's see Kabominali. Sakome mina silent. Rosketele kopi mama natala. Yelo bokore. Semina hiko bama sike. Semina hiko selaban. Semina hiko brasketa mahaya. Oh. Oh.
the name of Jesus. Listen, I see someone, I cannot tell if it's online or in the auditorium. I can no longer tell. This person that I see, you have a hearing problem on one of your ears. You have a hearing problem on one of your ears. In fact, it's your right ear. I want to see if the person I speak about, you cannot take a call with that ear. So we have one, two. Just follow my instructions. Follow my instructions. Follow my instructions. Put this finger in that ear that has the hearing problem. Put it. Father, I bind that deafening spirit. Deafening spirit be bound. Come out of the ears in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Here yeah. in the name of Jesus. Remove that hand. Cover the other one, the one that can hear. Cover it now. Still with your finger. That. If you are close to them, help them check the ear. If you are close to any one of them, speak into the ear. Please. Help me. If you notice that the person can hear, wave your hand to me. All right. Wait, wait, wait. I have five minutes. The reason why I did what I did is not because of the healing. The Lord told me while I tarried before him, that the only way I can find the person he has sent me to is that he will heal the ear. Now, those of you that are healed, come, come, come. I'm sent to you. Come. Ooh. Ooh. Please come, 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 come. Quickly. Ooh. You are holy. You are holy. Checking out glory. Checking out glory. Checking out glory. You are holy. You are holy. Checking out glory. Shaking up glory, shaking up glory. You are holy, you are holy. Shaking up glory, shaking up glory, shaking up glory. You are holy. You are holy. Second of glory. Second of glory. Second of glory. You are holy. You are holy. Now listen. 
The Lord sent me to one of you. Just keep quiet, those of you here. That you are going to receive an anointing. This anointing will aid your hearing, your spiritual hearing. You will know when to sit, you will know when to stand, you will know when to walk away, and you will know when to run. In the next 17 seconds, the person that I'm talking to, the anointing will rest so strong, to rest so strong, to rest so strong upon you. You will not be able to resist it. It will rest strong, it will rest strong, it will rest strong on you. A pavement, a highway is made through your life. Oh my God. The Lord comes to change your story. He comes to change your experience. And a highway is made in your life for the Lord. He will take glory. He will take glory. He will be exalted. He will be made manifest and all eyes shall see. And that which you call delay will no longer have authority to hold you in bondage. Because he makes a way. He makes a highway in your life, in your destiny.